In this year, we get a lot of releases of Linux distributions. For example, Ubuntu 24.4, Pop OS with a brand new desktop, also Linux Mint with many cool improvements in their new version 22 in the summer, for example. But Fedora makes the start at this year with Fedora 40 and the brand new GNOME 46 desktop. So I would say, let's check it out. What are the improvements? improvements of Fedora and Gnome and to which person of you I would recommend it. So I would say let's start. Fedora 40 will be released at 16th of April and will come with the latest Linux kernel 6.8 and of course with Gnome 46 which is available with Wayland by default but also with Xorg if you still want to use it. The new KDE version of Fedora 40 will be Plasma 6 and this won't have a Xorg version anymore. So at a latest point of Fedora 42, I would say Fedora will also ditch the Xorg support of GNOME. It's just a guess of me, but the discussions were already here about this ditching of Xorg and it will come in a few months, I would personally suggest. So yeah, let's head over to also a new family of Fedora, but yeah, some members are already existing quite a time, but now they got a complete family, which is called Atomic Desktops. In here we have Silverblue and Kinite, which are some immutable Fedora distributions, which heavily rely on Flatpak and their container technology, which is a very cool architecture under Linux. And yeah, these are now in a new family, which is called Atomic because Fedora ditches the word immutable and they are using atomic instead of for it. And we also have some new two editions, which is Sway Atomic and Pachi Atomic. The main difference between the atomic desktops and the normal Fedora editions are that the components are just some containers which are stacked up and this architecture allows a very smooth running but makes it harder for changes especially in the system. It's a very cool architecture. I would say at the current moment of time it's too early to use these in production especially if you are doing very much with your Linux desktop. But yeah, this could be the future. So definitely check it out. And if you want that I try out Silverblue, let me know in the comments. This was it for Fedora Atomic Desktops. And I would say let's get to GNOME 46. GNOME 46 has a new settings arrangement in the menu, especially for example, the system menu has some different points like region and language, date and time users, which before were in the settings bar itself. And now they are grouped together to a system. We also have something like this in privacy and security. For example, screen lock, location, diagnostics, but also something with devices. So you can control the camera access, for example. Also, we have some improvements in online accounts. These all have a new login screen or procedure sometimes. Here we can now better describe our login data. Also, if we want to connect to Google, then we have to sign in now via our browser. Here we come to the Google sign in page and here we sign in to yeah, our GNOME desktop. Yeah, this looks quite good. In the German version, this doesn't work at the moment. Yeah, I'm using a beta version in here. The real version comes at 16th of April. So also we got a new option here, which is the custom web DAF login. We can define our files address, our CALDAF address and CARDAF address, but we don't especially have to do this. So many services only need the server address and your username and password and the addresses are generated automatically or downloaded off the server because yeah, they have the information also at the server at specific generic points. If we come to sharing, we got something new in desktop sharing. I personally miss it here in the sharing menu. If we 
get to a system, then we see our remote desktop and beside our normal desktop sharing, which is VNC, we now got also a new tab with remote login which is RDP basically. So yeah, you can now easily create a remote login for RDP. It's very easy and handy. Here we have it, just enable it remote login. Now it is active and if you want, you can now connect via connections from another Fedora machine to this Fedora workstation. But keep in mind that for remote login, a user has to be logged out. So we can only connect via remote login if the user isn't using it already. So if you want to share your desktop screen only, then desktop sharing is the better for you. Also, I guess the description here is false. It should be VNC protocol. I hope that I did understand it quite well. So the yeah, these are to desktop sharing and remote login. Also, we got some new security features. For example, if we head over to some cool pictures and we are looking at them, we don't see anything new about it. But GNOME 46 comes with Glisten 1.0 which is a image decoder in a sandbox. So if you have compromised images on your system, the attacker has to get over another new security hurdle because of Glisten, you can't escape too easy because it's only a sandbox, which makes it more robust to potential security risks. Also, we have some new core apps. For example, camera is new in here. It's an easy webcam program. I personally do not have a camera attached at the moment, but yeah, it's very easy. You can record your webcam. You can take a picture of it. And yeah, that's about it. It's a new replacement of the old cheese application, which is in my opinion, very overdue. So it's good that cheese got replaced by camera. Also, the system monitor got an update to GTK4 with libadvisor. I personally don't like all these changes. Better to say, I think you could have done more. For example, yeah, this window doesn't look modern anymore, in my opinion. Also, the resources, yeah, it's okay. You see everything you have to, but... If we compare the KDE system monitor, then the GNOME monitor isn't as good as is. But yeah, you have to have some resources to change and to revamp the resource monitor. But at the moment, it's completely enough. But yeah, it could look nicer in the future, I would say. Yeah, also we got some new security features in Fedora 40. For example, if we connect to multiple Wi-Fi networks, for each Wi-Fi network, our MAC address is randomized. So if you connect to multiple Wi-Fi networks, you can't be identified across these, which gives you better network privacy. Also, in terms of security, Fedora 40 decides to enable high level system D security hardening settings. It aims to isolate and sandbox system services for enhanced protection, which makes it very useful for admins and creates some more options for that. Also, Fedora comes with the new Firefox 123 with Ruby 3.3, with PHP 8.3, with Portman 5. We also got a new version of WGET, which is a modern alternative. If we have a look to it, we now have GNU WGET 2.1, which is also multi-threaded and has a ton of features. Just have a look to w.get dash dash help and you see a lot of new features in here. So yeah, this is very cool. And also if you are dealing with AI, Fedora comes with PyTorch right in their repositories for seamless integration. So this will be also a welcoming feature for you. Yeah, that it is about Fedora 40. It will be released at 16th of April, will have 13 months of security updates. And I personally recommend Fedora to Linux users, which are already familiar with Linux and want to try out new things. 
beside Ubuntu or Linux Mint because Fedora has the newest technology of all Linux systems, I would say, and is a solid distribution. But it is a bit harder to get around with it because of the Red Hat compatibility. You don't have APT as a package manager, you have DNF. But summing up, it's a very cool distribution. And if you didn't try it out, I can recommend you giving it a shot if you are tired of your current Linux distribution. So that was it for today. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment, like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel and see you in the next one. Bye.